Mo Betta Blues is my favorite Spike Lee joint. But before you throw your shoe through the screen, hear me out. To me, what makes a great film is as simple as the way that it makes me feel. That's it. And Mo Betta Blues feels good. After Spike made his glorious achievement, do the right thing, all eyes were on him in Hollywood. And when he turned back around, he came to us in 1990 with the jazz sensation, Mo Betta Blues. Starring Denzel Washington as Bleak Gilliam, a virtuoso jazz trumpet player who waxes poetic on his instrument and who plays the heartstrings of women all the way to his bedroom. I want a man who knows what he wants, decisive. You don't know what you want. Make up your mind, be a man, and don't be wishy-washy on me. Hmm. I know what I want, my music, everything else is secondary. The women in his life operate as muses but are discarded in the moment inspiration strikes him. Let me leave the artist at work alone. The muse is visiting and Bleak is truly inspired. If his cold demeanor and perfectionism is Bleak's tragic flaw, then his friend Giant, played by the very conniving Spike Lee himself, is the catalyst that sets this tragedy into motion. B, how many ass whippers have you saved me from? That's the point. A lot. Well, irregardless of that, look, one of these days, I'm not gonna be around. You're gonna have to take that ass whipping. I will leave the rest to the movie, but be sure, the cost of Bleak's perfectionism is absolutely dire for him. He rivals with his peers, pushes away his friends, and generally lives a lonely lifestyle when you think about it. On the other hand, there's Wesley Snipes, who plays Shadow Henderson. Him and Bleak are rival players, which makes for a lot of tension and a nice payoff at the end of the film. In this film, you have great acting uh, and a great style from the wardrobe to the camera work, and the rhythm of the language is really important too. We get to hang out with the band backstage and like shoot the shit with them, and they're really charismatic, and we get involved in their laughter and their arguments. Keep coming up short. <laughs> no, 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 it's because she's white. Is she white? Because she's white. Yes. Oh. Yeah, she's a nun. Won't give me none, ain't had none. <laughs> She didn't, she didn't need uh, we linger on stage as gorgeous jazz music plays. We live in a heightened world of gangsters, guns, money, and women. And like in many Spike Lee joints, sex scenes are a character unto themselves. In one of the most remarkable scenes in the picture, Spike cuts between two of Blake's lovemaking sessions, but with two different women. But he cuts them together as if it's all happening in one moment each a part of Bleak's indecision. More better makes it more better. What about Delvis? I like her too. I like women. When you say it was a million and one shot, they wear the same dress and the same day and see each other. <laughs> like it or not, you're a dog. You're a good doggy, but you're a dog nonetheless. Get off! What? What did you call me? Bleak, how in the hell can you call me by her name? And finally, there's Bleak's obsession with playing his instrument and practicing his instrument. Uh, Spike presents this most beautifully when he circles Bleak in a 360 degree shot um, in his classic, like the person stays still but the background moves um, away. And we really I think it was Roger Ebert who commented that while he liked the film, he didn't think it shared the substance of its uh, younger sister do the right thing. And it doesn't, you know, for sure in that respect, but he said it was more style than substance. And I have to respectfully disagree with Roger, who, by the way, is my hero. The film is free like jazz music. It takes place in a dark world with colorful characters, great music, and beautiful women. And Bleak's story is told of a result of that world that he lives in. He struggles with love. And so there's this wonderful sequence at the end of the movie that's set to the Coltrane masterwork, A Love Supreme. A Love Supreme. 
And if that moment is in heart, then honestly, I don't know what is. I don't know. This movie just feels really good to me. I like the idea of watching The Hang, getting to see the band backstage and how realistic Spike pulls it off. And the actors behave in such a way where you really get involved in it. And Spike executed as he often does with elevated style. And I'm really glad to see that this um, past few award seasons he got recognized for Black Klansmen, but honestly for Spike, that kind of praise is insufficient. He is one of the most unique filmmakers there is, especially in his earliest work, and he deserves significantly more credit than he ever got. At the end of the day, Mo Better makes it Mo Better. Bye. <laughs>